How's it going folks? Jay from Self Sufficient Life channel here on YouTube. G'day Jay. Uh, he tagged me unofficially in, a com in the comments section of his allotment challenge clip so I thought I'd have a bit of a crack. Um, at the end I might throw in a couple of uh, frequently asked questions that I get all the time as well. Uh, so the allotment challenge, for you folks who don't know what it's about, it's pretty much all just 10 questions circulating around the YouTube gardening community. I think Foodie Lara over in UK, if I remember the name correctly, was the person to get it off and running. So yeah, I'll hook into it and yeah, at the end I might answer a few frequently asked questions. Um, how long have you had your allotment for? Well, we've pretty much all owned this property because we don't really have allotments here in Australia. We've pretty much all owned this property or paying the mortgage off since 2002. But I really didn't get off my butt and do anything till probably around about uh, 2009. We had a couple of potted plants, uh, veggie plants at the back stairs and that sort of thing. But we didn't turn the soil down the back here until around about 2009. That's when we started putting in um, the garden beds and also the chicken run and then a little bit later the aquaponic system. Uh, how long did you have to wait for your allotment? Well, I just had to um, wait long enough to get motivated and get off my butt and start. That's pretty much all. Yeah, probably about three or four years. Um, where did you learn about gardening? Uh, my family, both sides are great gardeners. Uh, my nan on the farm at Byabarra, uh, Upper Glen Echo, she had a pretty astounding veggie patch out the back there in its heyday. Uh, very formal, we um, set out one. My grandparents in Sydney, they were growing bananas and mangoes and all sorts of things in Collaroy Plateau. So yeah, they were pretty much all self-sufficient almost down there in Sydney on a small urban block before it was fashionable. Um, other than that, we've picked up bits and pieces from magazines like Grassroots Magazine, uh, also to Earth Garden. So yeah, we picked up a few ideas from there along the way, stumbled across permaculture, learned a few more bits and pieces, and the late 90s, Gardening Australia is a great TV show as well that we used to watch a lot. And then YouTube, as soon as we got the internet, we just went crazy on YouTube. Um, I subbed my first channel I think was Ray at Praxis 55712 so picked up loads of gardening tips from you folks out there so yeah that's pretty much all where I've picked up all my bits and pieces on gardening uh, do you plan a winter garden? Yes, we do plan to winter garden. It's actually our most productive time of year for us. We grow a load of leafy greens, also the brassicas, cauliflower, uh, cauliflower broccoli, a uh, couple of cabbages. They're pretty much all the staple brassicas. Uh, what's been your biggest success this year? Uh, would have to have been the tomatoes through uh, winter. Absolutely phenomenal amount of um, the large table size tomatoes. So yeah, uh, what else? The Okinawan spinach, it did really well in the aquaponic system and also the broccoli and yeah, the, the cauliflower, they did really well. Pretty much all hard to say we only had one good crop. They all did fairly well this winter. Uh, biggest success ever would have to be the broad ripple yellow currant tomatoes. YouTube gardener here in Australia, Karen, what's am I doing? Thank you, Karen. She gave us a load of seeds to get us started and Basically, the, the broad ripple yellow currants have taken over the patch. They're popping up randomly all around, all around the place, and we've taken absolutely kilos of fruit off that over the last 12 months. A fantastic plant. Um, what has been our biggest gardening disaster? Check out my potato growing clips. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, have you got a tried and true crop variety that you always grow? Well, the broad ripple yellow currants, whether we like it or not, we always get them. There's a couple of others that we really do like to grow all the time. Um, Nance um, carrots, they're a small little carrot. Also to the summertime chili, a nice fruity chili. Uh, the long purple eggplants, we've grown them for quite a number of years now. I think we moved to the property with seeds for those guys. They grow phenomenally well for us. One I nearly forgot was turmeric and galangal and ginger. Bit hit and miss on ginger, but our galangal and our turmeric crops, they always do phenomenally well. Uh, the galangal is a uh, Thai, they call it blue ginger, Thai blue ginger. Uh, it's got a few different names, different countries around Southeast Asia, but it's, a, it's pretty much all the flavour. If you have eaten Thai curries, um, you'll pick out the galangal as soon as you smell it as being one of the flavours in there. That's pretty much one of my favourite gingers to grow, actually. So, next. Uh, are you planning on trying anything new next year? I'm always looking for something new. We've had really good success with a couple of new crops this year, the mushroom plant and also the Okinawan spinach, so in the aquaponics. I'm always looking for something that grows a little bit better in the warmer climate we have here. So yeah, always got my eyes out for something. 
We've actually got some Chinese artichokes going for the first time. Haven't tasted them yet. Uh, they're from Brad from um, the Suburban Stewards Facebook group. Thank you very much, Brad. Also to the Longevity Spinach from Mr. Ben. Um, he also gave us some taro, which we've got growing behind us here, the big elephant leaf plants. They're, both of them are growing really well at the moment. Uh, also, he gave us some sweet leaf katuk, not stevia, but it's a... Um, it's supposed to be almost as nutritious as moringa or drumstick tree so we're trying that for the first time this year as well haven't grown large enough for us to harvest so it'll be interesting to see how they turn out by the end of summer next how do you preserve your crops well we pretty much well don't uh, we tend to eat straight from the patch i don't try and preserve a lot of food mainly because we don't have a large uh, pantry or fridge dedicated you know fridge space freezer space dedicated to storing a lot of food we do have turmeric in the freezer. I also still have some um, ghost chili powder I made a couple of years ago. Uh, that's in the pantry as well. So I've made up dried powders, uh, tomato powder as well. Just seems to um, store a little bit better than um, trying to jar it for us. Sort of brings down the volume. I do have some turmeric in the freezer. Uh, just some stuff I've ground up, uh, made into a, a pulp, just so we can toss bits and pieces into stir fries as we make it or curries don't have to come down and dig it out but pretty much well everything else is yeah we we harvest it and we eat it then and there oh there's a couple of tomatoes in the fridge from when we had a couple come off the plants during winter uh, at once and yeah we've just been pulling them out for pasta sauces when we make bolognese and that sort of thing but other than that yeah we pretty much will just eat fresh from the garden uh, what's your favorite meal to cook from veg from the plot? Well, my favorite meal to cook would have to be the Thai curries or Indonesian style curries and stews and that sort of thing using the galangal and the turmeric and the ginger also to the lemongrass and the kaffir limes we got growing up the side of the house throw a couple of shallots in as well uh, that's pretty much all our main meal I like to cook from the patch other than that what we eat the most from the patch or the meal we eat the most from the patch would have to be salads uh, I absolutely love eating um, everything raw, whether it's okra, beans, uh, the Okinawan spinach, mushroom plant, um, chilies, even lemongrass. I don't mind lemongrass raw if it's, you know, really, really finely chopped and macerated into a bit of a paste and put in with a bit of coconut vinegar. There's a bit of a dressing on our salads. And I suppose that pretty much all brings us to the end. So I'll pop the questions down in the description below so you can suss them out. And you're also supposed to tag a couple of people to do this, so I'd like like to tag a couple of Aussies. Andy from McDowell Manor, uh, he's got a small urban farm, uh, he does home brew, fermenting, he's got aquaponics, chickens, quails now, and he grows in beds, so in the ground that is, veggies and fruit and whatnot, so check out uh, Mr. Andy's channel, I'll put links in the description for you, and also too I challenge Andrew over in Perth from Veggie Patch in Perth channel, way over that away, a couple of thousand kilometers on the other side of the continent, uh, check out Andrew's channel, channel as well, link below, over in Western Australia or in the Perth area, they've got pretty much all sand for soil, so he's got his Gardens come a long way with the different amendments and compostings and bits and pieces he's done. So you've been tagged guys, you don't have to make a clip but it'd be great to you know see what you've got to say about the 10 questions. So I thought I'd tag on a couple of frequently asked questions as well here just to knock them over as uh, two because I get it quite a bit, um, a few of them in particular. Uh, what do I do for a living? Well, I pretty much will am a stay-at-home dad. We home educate the girls through the Brisbane School of Distance Education. So there needs to be a responsible adult around, um, responsible adult around to look after them. So that's me. Bianca works full-time for the um, Department of Environment and Heritage. So I'm pretty much all the um, donkey that gets to stay home. I also YouTube. I get an income from YouTube, believe it or not. Um, so thank you very much to everyone who watches the clips, by the way. Um, I get a bit of a residual ad income from the clips that I've posted and I also write a blog for a savings website a frugal living website called simple savings here in Australia so I earn a bit of money through them as well but mainly I spend most of my time um, answering questions from viewers and emails I get and Facebook questions I spend uh, pretty much well over an hour a day just catching up on comments and questions and whatnot so that keeps me busy Question number two, how much do we eat from the patch? Well, it can be feast or famine, to tell you the truth. During winter, we pretty much all ate every day something from the patch in either a lunch meal or a um, evening meal. Brassicas, we were just getting loads and loads of 
the cauliflowers and the broccolis. The broccoli gives you side shoots after the main heads were harvested, so loads of them. Also too, a lot of wombok cabbage this year, which was nice for a change. Uh, tomatoes, we were harvesting tomatoes every day, almost every day through winter, so that was fantastic. So they a lot of tomato sandwiches and tomato mayo rice cakes and that sort of thing. Um, now it's pretty much all cucumbers, loads and loads of cucumbers, at least one or two every second day. A lot of chilies have come on at the moment, eggplants, I'm eating the baby carrots at the moment. A lot of salad greens still from the aquaponics until I ripped out the Okinawa spinach the other day. Beans are just starting to dry up so I've got some more beans on the go. Some weeks we might have one or two evening meals from the patch, other weeks you know we might have you know six or seven so it just depends on the season and what's going on in the patch. Next question is do you sell your seeds or plants? Uh, no I don't. Um, I give a lot away through Share the Seed Group Australia, it's a Facebook group um, and also to uh, giveaways on YouTube. I've just finished one and mailed out the seeds a couple of weeks ago here on YouTube. Every now and then I might give away some to random people that I chat to on through Facebook or YouTube but generally I don't sell them. Um, I do have an online store though for uniseals and root pouches if you're in Australia. Small little plug for myself. Got to do it every now and then. Um, but yeah, no seeds or plants at this point in time folks. So there you go folks, that's pretty much all it for the allotment challenge. Um, hope you don't mind me taking liberties and throwing a couple of frequently asked questions in the end there. If you have any comments, questions or suggestions, as always, feel free to pop them in the comment section below and I'll get back to you where I can. I'm actually running really, really behind on catching up on comments, so I think I've got two or three more clips to do and then I'll be up to date. So, hope everyone is well and happy and I'll catch you next clip, folks. Cheers!